What's up, y'all? It's the movie retrospective. Doing some 80s shit again. Doing some comic book movies, but maybe not the one that you're uh, thinking of. <laughs> so this is Swamp Thing from 1982. Yeah. Now, Better than I remembered it. Yeah, honestly, yeah. I hadn't seen this movie for a really long time. Probably since the early to mid 80s. I, don't, I didn't see it in the theater, but I'm pretty sure I saw it on cable. And I remember like liking it, but not being one that was really in my regular rotation, I guess. So I was actually really curious to watch it again. And do you know, I had completely and utterly forgotten that this shit was directed by Wes fucking Craven. Yeah. I totally forgot about that. But you know what I mean? So uh, how he got involved with it, and actually, <laughs> at the time, I think he was probably sorry that he got involved with it like afterward because it really didn't do all that well at the theater. But, uh, you know, he was kind of more known for doing, obviously, real gritty horror, right? He'd done Last House on the Left and Hills Have Eyes and all that. And I guess he kind of wanted to show, like, the larger Hollywood studios that he could deal with sort of like an action movie with comedic elements. Like, he wanted to show, I guess, that he wasn't just, like, a one-trick pony. Now, he had done Deadly Blessing prior to this, like, in 1981. And when they called him to do Swamp Thing... It's funny because Wes Craven, I don't know if you know, he's talked about this in a few of his interviews, but he was brought up in a very strict fundamentalist Christian household and was not allowed to read comic books. Hmm. So he had never, I mean, when he was a kid, he never saw horror movies and he, you know, so it, so he didn't know anything about the Swamp Thing character, but I guess he kind of liked it. So he came on board. One of the guys that was producing it, I saw an interview with him earlier named Michael Uslan. This was actually his first kind of big production thing. As a kid, he had grown up being really into DC Comics, particularly Batman. And he was sad when he was a kid that the only Batman that we had was kind of the campy, you know, the campy Batman TV series. Yeah. Uh, he thought that, you know, superheroes should be taken more seriously. He was imagining the Dark Knight. Which a lot of dudes were. Yeah, I you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so he was. So he kind of wanted to... Uh, he did actually buy the rights to Batman uh, when, you know, when that wasn't all that expensive. And uh, so initially he wanted to do something with Batman, but then he was like, well, that's going to cost like way too much to, you know, get his vision across. So he decided to go with a lesser known DC Comics character, Swamp Thing. Yeah, let me say something about Batman. <laughs> This is a personal experience that we I had uh, when I was in high school living up in Michigan. We'd get up fucking, this is 80s, you know. I think it must have been around 85. Uh, it was before the uh, uh, Batman movie came out, the... Uh, the one with uh, Jack Nicholson, uh, who, who, uh, decorate, who, who directed What, the Tim Burton one? Tim Burton, yeah. It was before that one actually came out, but not much before, like maybe a few months before that one. And me and other guys are sitting up there, sitting in Denny's, drinking coffee in the middle of the fucking night, you know, because it was safe to go there when you were kids. Your parents let you do it, I guess, you know. And uh, bitching about why fucking, why there wasn't a good Batman. That Batman should have been like the comic books, and there was a comic books around at that time called The Dark Knight. And, you know, Batman was awesome. He was kind of like fucking The Punisher. And eventually we got something kind of like that, you know. The, the Tim Burton one was pretty good. But the ones that came later were a lot better. That's what we were imagining back then. Well, you know? apparently you weren't alone yeah. because a lot of people did, you know, and, and as I said, I mean, Superman, the first Superman was obviously showed that superheroes could be You're taken right. more the seriously. Two. Right. The first two. But uh, so far that hadn't really been done for Batman. And like yeah. I said, um, you know, because Michael Uslan, he wanted to do Batman, but he just thought he wouldn't be able, since he was new at it, he wouldn't be able to get the budget to yeah. do what he wanted to do. So he decided to go with a lesser known DC character, Swamp Thing. Yeah, we were taking him serious when we were kids. Just that they yeah. weren't giving that to us yet. That yeah. came later. One of the first real serious ones after Batman or after Superman that I saw that I said was, was hey, that's kind of serious. I like was Dark Man. And I don't know if there was a com comic book associated with that, but it felt like a comic book movie. I don't know and either, but you know, what's weird Dark is, Man was good. is I like that I think it. there's like some there's some similarities in this in Swamp Thing. There's Man, some Dark stuff Man. that happens in this movie yeah. that's similar to stuff that happened in Dark Man. I'm not sure right. either, like if Dark Man came from because yeah. the Swamp Thing comic, 
Yeah. Um, the character of Swamp Thing first came, like first uh, emerged in 1971. Yeah, I think in maybe like another comic, and then like he right. had his own later on. Yeah, I, I was mentioning that when me and Jenny were watching. I was like, this is kind of like Dark Man. Yeah, it, it reminded me a lot of Dark Man. It is kind of a serious comic book movie, serious for the time. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, it's still pretty. It's still kind of goofy. Right. Gotta say, but it was um, a big move up compared to like a lot of the other super, super yeah bullshit. Later on, Spawn came out. We fucking loved that. But this was way before the Spawn. All right, this is there. I really with this movie, there's only two problems I have with this movie. Swamp Thing didn't look like the Swamp Thing. He it's, does, but he uh, kind of looks... I saw this one... He looks too human in this. Yeah, well, like I said, yeah. they. I think the budget on this was only yeah. maybe two and a half million. Um, you know, and honestly, the producers were kind of like breathing down Wes Craven's neck. He had to cut a lot of stuff out that right. he wanted to do because it was too expensive. Uh, so they didn't really have a shit ton of money to work with the suits. And I think that the main criticism that people uh, level toward this is that it suffers from quote unquote man in suit syndrome. Yeah. Where it just looks time. like a dude in a suit. The the Swamp Thing suit is not bad. Um, not terrible. Like I said, it doesn't look like the comic book no, necessarily. Yeah. It kind of looks like I saw another review of this earlier that said it actually looks like somebody dressing up as him, like for cosplay, but he couldn't really afford to do a good one. Yeah. It kind of looks like that. The co the comic book covers the Swamp Thing. He looked like Sigmund in the fucking Sea Monster. That's what he looked. I mean, he like. still he looks, looks like, like a person, guy. but he has like all these kind of like palm fronds, yeah. like sticking out like yeah. that. He still looks like a big, like a Hulk type right. person. But and he still looks like a, a human, but he has like a lot more detail and a lot yeah. more plant matter on him. And then the superhero, the the uh, the, uh, the super villain in this fucking looks like shit. I mean, it's that's a good idea, but it was a good idea, but it just looks like that's shit. the worst. I have to say, I mean, it they, looks really bad. They had people out there that could make <laughs> really bad. They could make badass co uh, costumes, and you know, really, they should have got the guy who who did fucking like the howl, like the guys who did the howl, like who yeah. should have done. The costume. Was that? Didn't this. Rob Bottin do that? They could have executed kind of like a pig version of, of or a wild boar version of kind of like the the uh, the, the werewolves from from um, the Howling, and it would have been a lot better. I was not entirely yeah. sure. Can I just say this? Yeah. I was not entirely sure what the arcane monster was supposed to be, even. I thought, because you remember that scene like near the beginning of Swamp Thing where uh, Ray Wise, like the, the doctor genius guy, is digging around in the tank and then he pulls that little critter out. Yeah, it's a possum. Which is like, yeah, it's like a possum. Yeah. So I thought because they were talking about this possum being like part of the experiment because, you know, the serum is supposed to mingle plant and animal DNA uh, for, you know, which that can... Of course, that's never going to go wrong. But you know what I mean? So they had that. So I thought that the arcane monster was maybe supposed to be like, I was like, was it trying to harken back to the possum? Because I was like, what animal is he supposed to be exactly? And he didn't really have any plant. I didn't, I wasn't reading plant. I, I was. it was a wild boar. Yeah, I was more. Yeah, I was more reading like pig head, but yeah. with, with a mane. like a mane. But yeah. then what what was going on with the rest of the suit though? I, I couldn't remember. figure out. Did it have a tail? See, I don't like think it did. And the thing about it though is that he wasn't just like a pig man with hair. Like I don't know what that was about. But he also like at first he kind of like started he didn't melt exactly but he kind of almost looked like he was developing a cocoon of some kind yeah, and he looked like out. a big turd yeah and then like he busted out of the turd and then he was a pig monster or something i, I didn't really a get amorphosis like I know, but the thing about it, I mean, the whole... It didn't make any sense. It wasn't a good creature, really. It wasn't. And, yeah. and honestly, and it should have at least tied in with, like, the theme of the... Because, yeah. you know, it, and we'll talk about the plot in a little bit, uh, too, but the whole point of the serum was that it makes you more of what you already are. Yeah. And I was like, I didn't get that with the arcane monster. I'm like, so what does that mean that he was... I would have thought... A pig. I, don't know. I it guess didn't make, it didn't make any sense. You're reading too much into it. It's, you're reading well, too that's much how, into well, that's what I do. Because <laughs> what it was is, that but they, they should, but they should have thought more they, about it. They, is yeah. what I'm saying. They're like, get that, get this movie in the can. Yeah, he's a monster. <laughs> that's all they're thinking about. You know, it, 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 in this era, they did not think too, too clearly about things like that. Usually, 
I mean, a good, good movies did, but most of them really didn't. It was just trying to get the, just trying to get a monster out there, get the movie done, and let fucking kids figure out, figure it out, or make shit up about it. They didn't really care. Oh, you want a monster? Yeah, here's a monster. Yeah, that's 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 as far as that shit. I went. will say that the monster, the the arcane monster, didn't look as bad as Rawhead Rex, but almost. It actually kind of no, reminded. It, 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 it kind of reminded me. Well, it, okay, it kind of reminded me of the Rawhead it's Rex similar, monster. It was. It was worse. Rawhead Rex. Yeah, Rawhead Rex was. I think the Rawhead Rex we, monster. I think that it, that threw me off because it just had those big googly eyes. When Rawhead Rex came out, <laughs> we got that shit on VHS when it was new, and we fucking enjoyed the movie. We're like, yeah, but mostly we just liked the damn church scenes with the fucking priest and get, he was getting pissed off by the monster and the. And the evil fucking, the evil stained glass window. We just thought that shit was cool. And then when you saw the monster, you know what I mean? We're like, yeah, okay. We didn't question it that much, you know. I guess you could say we're kind of like, it was the 80s. The 80s weren't that different from the 50s, I guess. Well, I mean, the 80s, like, a lot, <laughs> you would let a lot of stuff slide yeah, as yeah. long as it would. And honestly, the first time I saw Swamp Thing, it didn't occur to me that, like, the mon- And like I said, the Swamp Thing monster looks okay. Yeah. Um, you know, but the the evil monster at the end, at least it's only at the end, like, yeah. doesn't really look all that good and doesn't seem all that well thought out. Um, but yeah, they, so... They did some random bullshit. What it was is they cheaped out. They didn't get the right people to make those... Cut. Or uh, like I said, maybe they just ran out of money. Because like I said, they uh, made this for only two point five million, yeah. and Wes Craven said that the producers were huge dicks and yeah. that they were just constantly like on their asses all the time. You okay. have to cut this. You have to cut that. You know, this is costing too much. Blah blah uh, blah. Okay. So I kind of feel like well, the you, arcane monster. They made it out of whatever like remnants they that, had like hanging yeah. around, you like can, in the in the creature shop. You can put that on the producers then, because you, you don't you don't do a sci-fi horror comic book movie unless you have enough money to at least get good costumes. If you don't can't afford good costumes, you don't do that shit. You do something else. And I mean, that's kind of like dumb. the whole, you know, this is a monster movie. Yeah, you better have the monster. You Pretty have much, the superhero. And the monster in this one, yeah. uh, I mean, you know, the good monster, Swamp Thing. You see him a lot, and yeah. you see him in broad daylight. A lot. So they had you, guys that can make good creatures, yeah. good creatures effects for for not that much money. I mean, that was a kid that made the damn Predator, and they hired him as second unit to come in and fix the shit that they had on there before. <laughs> Which and looked he like was ass. Just a, some kid yeah. in late teens, early twenties, and he didn't charge that much to make that Predator. Just he wanted to make it. I think he made most of it in his garage, didn't he? He had a that's studio, what I heard. A garage studio. I mean, he was good at latex. He could model and sculpt and. But it's more talent than money, really. You just got to get the right guys. And the problem is, is that the right once you get the right guys, once he's got a name, he wants to charge a shit ton of money. Well, rightly well, so. Well, people are fighting over him, so he's yeah. got all these damn projects. But they should have went for some new guy who wanted to show off his skills, and you hire him to make the damn costumes. And it wouldn't be. It wouldn't. But I could beat those costumes. Now, I'm pretty good. I'm with my hands, but I could definitely make better costumes than that. Well, I could for sure make a better yeah. one than the arcane monster yeah. in this. I'm oh, pretty, yeah, I'm pretty yeah, confident. I'm pretty confident that saying that. Been, <laughs> that one would have been easy to beat. But I think I could have done I, I, the swamp thing. The swamp thing. I could have done a better version of the swamp thing. Yeah, I could make that costume. Mine would look a little bit more like Sigmund and the Sea Monster. That would look like the ones. On, it'd look like the cover of the comic books. Yeah, they should have made him like yeah, that you know, snout and the red eyes. You know, that'd have been cool if they'd have yeah. made him like go- make like goopier, like with more kind of stuff hanging on him. Yeah, but it's, well, he's like a shambling mound of stuff. Is what what, he, what Swamp Thing actually looked like. I mean, uh, I that's understandable. Like I said, because he did have to do like a lot of stunts and fighting and shit like that, and. Yeah. Where they shot this was hot as balls. Yeah. So uh, I'm imagining that, that, yeah. You didn't have to show its skin. The comic book is just a shambling mound of stuff. So really, you could make basically a ghillie suit. That's what we'd call it in the army. A ghillie suit. Which is a damn jumpsuit with a bunch of burlap straps hanging from it. It's all spray painted different colors. I just do it with different materials and have things like fucking... Like it looked in the comic book. Lily pads and fucking tentacles and pieces of damn grass he looked like he was growing you know or it looked like he looked like a plant well he man. was he was a plant, he plant man. man he yeah. was a big bulk, bulky yeah, be, plant man i would do it along the lines of a ghillie suit 
Yeah, I mean, and that yeah. probably wouldn't have, have been, been a lot better. Uh, that hard to do. But yeah, yeah. I, I heard that like even the stunt man that played the arcane monster in this like at least faint, fainted at least one time because it yeah. was so fucking hot. Now, even though the movie was supposed supposed to be set in the swamps of Louisiana, they actually shot that in the swamps of South Carolina. Yeah. So, uh, but it I, I, it looks yeah. like Louisiana though. It kind of, kind of. Some of the trees of this. It thing. looks swampy. That's for sure. It looks swampy, just not as thick as Louisiana. Lu- Lu- Louisiana swamp has got a fucking canopy over. It's real dark. Real dark in there. Yeah, I'm sure. Much darker. Than I mean, that. I don't know if it was cheaper to film in South, right. South Carolina, but I'm assuming it probably was. Yeah. So okay, so let's talk about uh, the story for this. So what you have at the beginning, you have the foxy Adrian Barbeau in yeah. this, and both of her boobs. Yeah, uh, let's let's talk about that for a second because we watched this on Tubi. It's yeah. on Tubi for free. Yeah, and it says it's rated PG. Yeah, and I'm watching the movie and I'm like, this has a lot of nudity for a PG. But I found out there's a reason for that. Okay, reason was Adrian Barbeau uh, shot full frontal nudity, not for the U.S. cut, for the European cut. Okay. Uh, there were also a couple of other scenes that were yeah. supposed to be only in the European cut, like the whole Eyes Wide Shut party they were having with the stripper and everything. Um, so those were only supposed to be in the European one. But when they put the DVD out in the U.S., they accidentally put out the European one with all the titties in it. Yeah. And then this woman in Dallas, Texas, rented the movie for her kids and complained at all the boobies. So they tried to recall it and fix it. Yeah. Uh, or actually, the first thing they tried to do, they tried to take the easy way out and like ask Adrian Barbeau, hey, can you sign off on the American nudity? And she was yeah. like, no, that's not on my contract. She's right. like, I only did the nudity for the European market yeah. because the Europeans love their boobies. Yeah. And so, uh, but it, as it is now, I guess they just like said, fuck it, and either upped up the rating to PG-13. I'm not entirely sure what they did. Because like I said, we watched it on Tubi, and it still says that the rating's PG-13, but all the nudity is in there. It's in the European. It's the European cut, the international cut. It's as they ridiculous call it. because there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, no, I know. It's just, it's just funny that it's just topless. And it's no big deal. Well, and it's like super gratuitous, which is yeah. like what's really funny about well, it. That's what it's supposed to be. Yeah, it's, it's like because in the American cut, you could yeah. still see like the side boob. Yeah, it hits you from side because there's like a shot of her like yeah. from the side, but then she turns to the front and she's like, "Hey, boobies yeah. and everything like that." And I was like, "Oh my god, that's hilarious." Adrian Barbeau was known for 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 her. Well, yeah, for you know her cans. All right. <laughs> Uh, but they, in in the U.S., you didn't really see him. It was just you know she was just in outfits. Well, and I in, this, thought, in this movie, you do you get a big steaming yeah. eyeful. <laughs> Me being an, an avid boobologist, <laughs> pre- professor of boobology, I always thought they were implants, but uh, no, they're natural. Yeah, and, see, seeing right. them uh, without a bra, yeah, right. And she she's let's just say you know she's talented. She's very gifted. Um, <laughs> not as big as I thought they were going to be, but it's most. She she looks better in a bra, if you ask me. She looks better in a bra. She she looks bigger in a bra. Wow, tough crowd. Hey, <laughs> I'm just you know, in her era. Well, actually, no, because they, it had massive implants in that in that era too. Yeah, they did. Just uh, yeah, no. She I think she just she looks a lot bigger in a in in a, in a bra. Well, mo- she's most, good though. Most That's ladies a, do. It's probably like a C cup. Most ladies, yeah, do. but yeah, yeah. So if if you ever want to see Adrian B- Barbo's actual boobs, uh, you know, yeah, live and in color, uh, this here is the movie to see him, uh, yeah. because the version that's on Tubi is yeah. the European cut, so you get to see the full frontal nudity. Yeah, so she's looking good, especially for her age. She's not a young woman in this. I would say she's pushing forty. I don't know though, because yeah. I mean, this was only eighty two. Uh, she'd only she'd been in the uh, she was in the fog the year before this. She was in. Uh, Escape year? from New York, the year before this. So this is year before that? Okay. I no, was... this was a year after Escape from New York. Okay. When did The Fog come out? 1980? All right, so she was Okay, so this was 30s. two years after The Fog. She probably... And she was also in Creep Show this same year. Yeah, so she'd have been in her 30s. So... Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, so she plays a character named Alice Cable. Now, Alice Cable is actually not a character from the comic books. She's a, um, a conglomeration. Uh, in the comic books, there was a guy named Matt Cable, and he had uh, his wife, I think, was named uh, Abby Cable, and she was actually the niece of 
Anton, the, the supervillain, okay? Yeah. So they just combined those two people into one character. So at the beginning of the movie, uh, there's this top secret, super secret government uh, research project going on out in these fucking swamps, right? Uh, and one of the guys on the crew has presumably been eaten by an alligator. So Adrian Barbeau gets sent out there to replace him. So out here at this secret facility, Ray Wise, who's kind of like this genius doctor, and his sister, who is also a genius doctor, are making this glowing uh, reanimator juice. <laughs> it looks just like the reanimator juice. That's supposed to... Well, he's combining animal and plant DNA, right? And then it's supposed to just make plants grow really fast to, you know, stave off human starvation. They're just trying to grow more food for everybody, right? Uh, so there was that whole thing. Now, there's also this bad guy, Anton Arcane, who's played by Louis Jordan, uh, who was in Octopussy, actually, a year or two after this. He was a, he was a Bond villain. I keep forgetting that this movie is that old. It is, yeah. Yeah, this came out when I was 10. Damn. So, <laughs> damn, that is old. <laughs> but yeah, so Anton Arcane also wants to get his grubby little mitts on this uh, on this serum. So he has hired uh, this gang of sort of idiotic militia dudes to They're mercenaries. Yeah, it's mercenaries to go in there and like kind of get him out. And this yeah. and it's funny because. It's uh, the little missionary, the missionaries, well, you know what I mean. The, the little group is led by David Hess, who is, who obviously was Krug in uh, Last House on the Left. He always plays a rapist. He's very rapey in this one, too. He doesn't actually rape anybody that we know of, but uh, he threatens it a couple times. Although Adrian Barbeau does kick him in the balls, so there's that. Uh, but yeah, so that's essentially what's going on. Um, you know, the the militia, not militia guys. Why do I keep saying There's that? There's a difference. The, merc there, the mercenary, mercenary guys. guys. I just keep, it's it's yeah. an M word. I just keep saying yeah, it's that. An it's an M word. So, uh, so the mercenary guys keep trying to get in there and get the serum and get the notebooks and all this other shit. And then it turns out a, a bunch of people get killed. And then Ray Wise, the doctor, he spills the serum on himself and blows up, sets himself on fire. Well, he doesn't, you know, accidentally sets himself on fire and then just jumps into the swamp. Now, everybody thinks that he's dead, but then he comes back later as Swamp Thing. So the serum has made him into this, uh, into this monster. Now, at first... They want because I love Ray Wise, right? Like he he's been in a million things. Um, I'm my favorite is like Twin Peaks, obviously, but uh, as Leland Palmer, but he was actually supposed to be in the Swamp Thing suit too, like at least during the close-ups. But and then they were just going to get a stunt man for when Swamp Thing has to like jump around. But what happened was when they did the makeup tests. The guy that plays Swamp Thing, Dick Durock, which sounds like a comic book name. Or a porn uh, name. Or a porn name, yeah. too. Sorry, Dick. Uh, but uh, <laughs> he probably already knows that. She's apologizing to the Dick. <laughs> Why do I apologize to Dick? Dick hasn't done anything bad to you. No, I'm Dick saying I'm, so, I'm sorry name. that his name yeah, sounds okay. like a porn name. Okay. That's what I meant. All right. I mean, maybe he's, maybe he's into that. I don't know. Mm. Uh, but yeah, so. It's probably a stage name. Yeah. So when they did the makeup test, they were like, well, Dick Durock, the stuntman, and Ray Wise look completely different with that makeup on. So basically they're like, okay, well, Ray Wise just plays the human, you know, plays his human equivalent. And then once he's in the suit, it's going to be the stuntman like all the time. So that's kind of how they got around that problem. Uh, but, you know, so so as it happens, like the pretty much the whole middle of the movie, this isn't like a very long movie. I think it's only 93 minutes. Uh, that's with the titties added back in. I think it's only 91 minutes with the yeah. titties taken out. But the whole middle of the movie is essentially just Adrian Barbeau trying to run away from the mercenaries. Uh, and then she just keeps getting saved by Swamp Thing. Like, they yeah. keep capturing her. And then either she gets away or Swamp yeah. Thing jumps up and, like, starts beating the crap out of them. Yeah, the mercenaries are in there to be cannon fodder for, for Swamp Thing, basically. Yeah, That's he really just like, throws them around. There's, like, some airboat explosions. It's pretty rad, I gotta say. Yeah. I mean, for a two... I This movie was actually better than I remembered. It's yeah. it's it's low budget. You can tell it's low budget. 
Um, it does have like some cool explosions in it. Uh, I do like the Swamp Thing suit, but it could have been a lot better. Yeah. Uh, the monster at the end really kind of let it down. I yeah. kind of wish, I kind of wish that they would have just let Arcane. I kind of wish she hadn't even drunk the serum. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because. Definitely I mean, you wouldn't have to show the stupid ass monster. Then you wouldn't have to show the stupid ass monster. Like they could have like written their way around that yeah. because there was a thing where, so he see. Th here's the dumb thing though. So Anton Arcane, who's supposed to be this big like evil super genius, right? He sees what the serum did to, uh, to Swamp Thing. Like he turned him into Swamp Thing, right? To to mm -hmm. the Doctor, and then he's like, well, just for shits and giggles, I'm gonna give it to one of my henchmen, like this big hulking dude named Bruno. And it turns him into a little person who kind of looks like an elf or something. A little pig man. Or a little pig man or something. Yeah. And uh, he's like, what the fuck? And then that's when Swamp Thing says, oh, well, the serum, I don't, I'm not really sure how Swamp Thing figured this out. But he says the serum actually just makes you more of what you were to start with. So you're, if you were like kind of strong in heart or whatever, he didn't say this, but this was how I took it. Um, you know, then it'll make you really strong because Swamp Thing is really super strong. Oh, and also he has healing abilities he and can, can bring people back to life. Yeah. Because a kid does get killed in this. <laughs> Spoiler alert. It is Wes Craven after all. He's like, fuck you. I'm killing a kid. But, uh, but he gets brought back to life. And I think Adrian Barbeau gets killed a couple of times. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. she get killed a couple of times? At, le at least twice. She gets drowned once. And then the second time. I think That's she got, right. She got, she got shot in the titty. Yeah. She got it, shot in the tit. Fixed That's right. The titty. Like you should, and then brought her back to life. At which point we were watching yeah, the movie, and I and I'm like taking on Swamp Thing's voice, being like, "Honey, you can't just keep yeah. dying and like expecting me to bring you back to life all the time. This is like the yeah. second time now, right? Jesus and, Christ, and I'm, watch I'm there it. And like, wow, she comes. He fixes the titty when she comes back. They're actually double G's, like big old double G. I said, yeah, that would that would you would that track shit like that. Yeah, that's what yeah. I said. Yeah. I said, that's what you would do if yeah, you had yeah. Swamp Thing healing. Not only did I fix them, I fucking improved them. <laughs> there you go. Don't fall over. <laughs> yeah, if she falls over her face, she'll be like, boing. <laughs> she'll just, like, spring back up. But, yeah, so, uh, so, yeah, so he can bring, like, shit back to life and everything. So I'm guessing that because the doctor was, like, a good guy, um... He, it turned him, like, physically stronger and gave him healing abilities. Whereas... The henchmen and Anton Arcane were shitheads, although Bruno was okay. I mean, he did bad shit, but you could tell he felt sort of bad about it. You know what I mean? So he was kind of like a reluctant. And then once he got turned into a little pig person, um, he turned on his, uh, you know, his superior pretty quickly. But see, the, I think that really would have made the movie if Anton Arcane, okay, okay, if they had to make him drink the serum, at least make him turn into something that made sense. Yeah. Like, I can't think of anything right now, like, off the top of my head, but Neither I'm sure... Could they. <laughs> yeah. Neither could they. I guess so. It's honest. like, I don't I don't know, a pig person with a mullet and wearing, like, a just a beige jumpsuit? How they, about that? <laughs> they could have they done anything other than what they did. I, I mean, I kind of thought... Well, the first thing I thought, and I know they can't do this because that would be ridiculous. <laughs> that would be a totally different kind of movie. I said, well, he, you know, he's supposed to be, like, this big genius, but he's also, like, a huge, giant, like, arrogant asshole. I was like, why don't they just turn him into, like, a huge, big anus? Mm. But... <laughs> I think what they should have done is just turn him in. It would have been so much cheaper and more effective to turn him into something more kind of like the Emperor from Star Wars. Just, yeah. a, just an evil sorcerer type... You know, yeah, they could have done that. All he had to do. They could have done that. They, why don't they give him like a reptilian type of thing? Yeah. Like a snake mod, you know, or alligator or something like that. More. Just a fucking a wizard costume, like yeah. an emperor with some fucking uh, 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 reptile contact lenses and, you know, a slight green hint, tinge, and maybe he can fucking make some fucking poison come out of it or something. Just poison his ass. Well, because snake, I mean, snake and alligator, that would have, yep. that would tie back to the swamp at yep. least. So you'd at least have some thematic, like, continuity. The end of the movie, it starts skewing very young and childish. They got to have a monster fight. It's like something out of WWF, WWE. So they yeah. wanted, they wanted a monster he could wrestle with. That's and Swamp what, Thing be throwing, like, you know, around. throwing dudes out of airport, uh, airports, yeah. airboats and, like, blowing them up they and shit like that. didn't quite know how to take comic book movies to the next level at this point they 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 were 
still kind of tongue in cheek, you know what I mean? They, they a they, little bit. They weren't taking their own material seriously. That was yeah. always the fucking problem with comic book movies of, of of the early era. The people making it didn't take the shit seriously, so you're gonna end up with fucking bullshit. I mean, you know, I do like this movie, though. It could have been better, but this is a very transitional... This wasn't only a transitional movie for comic book movies in general. It was also a transitional movie for Wes Craven because, as I said, prior to this, he had done more kind of, like, gritty, realistic, uh, super violent horror films. And then he did this one, and this one did so badly that he thought he wasn't going to work again. He was actually kind of out of work for two years. He lost his house. Uh, he had to borrow money from Sean Cunningham for uh, you know from Friday the 13th uh, to pay his taxes. I think he borrowed five grand from him or something. And he just didn't think he was going to work again. But while he was working on this movie, he had the idea for, guess what? Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. So, uh, and obviously that just like took the fuck off. So he went on to do that and scream and everything like that. So it was fine. But this was definitely one that was like a transitional. And like I said, it's one when I talk about Wes Craven or when I think about Wes Craven, this is one that I completely forgot that he directed. It's kind of like it's kind of like when I think about John Carpenter, and sometimes I completely forget that he uh, that he directed Christine. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's one of the, even though I love that movie, it's kind of one of those things that you just like forget because well, it it's not one of their big. And it doesn't feel like a Carpenter movie. That's tr that's true. I mean, it kind of does a little bit, but yeah, you um, have to look for it. Yeah, it's actually a little classier than his normal shit in a certain way. <laughs> or, I don't want to say classier, a little bit more corporate feeling in a way, like somebody was keeping him under control. I don't know, well, I kind of feel like that's maybe what happened with this movie right. too. I just I because Swamp Thing wasn't a proven. IP. Uh, it was a comic book character that was kind of like not a very well-known one from the DC stable. Um, there had never really been a movie made of it before. Wes Craven had never made a movie like this before. Uh, it was a new producer who had never worked in the movie industry before. So I kind of feel like the other producers or the studio was just kind of like, man, we're going to you know, they they really kind of wanted to keep an eye over everything. And they were saying, you know, you got to cut this. You got to cut this. You're spending too much money. And uh, Wes Craven did not really have a good experience on this movie. But, I mean, taking all that into account, it still came out pretty decent, I thought. And even though it didn't do very well at the box office, when it came out on video, it kind of became a cult hit. So much so that they made a sequel to it that had um, uh, Dick Durar came back. Uh, and Louis Jordan came back, and uh, that uh, Adrian Barbeau did not want to come back, so they put Heather Locklear in it instead as the love interest. And then they also did a TV series uh, that I think went on for a couple seasons, and they did an animated, like a kids show, although I think that only lasted a few episodes. But so it's definitely you know, made a, a cultural impact, uh, you know what I mean? Just, which is strange, like, when you see this first movie, which is good, but, you know, considering, like, how much of a cult following it has nowadays. Swamp Thing always, Swamp Thing kind of reminds, it kind of feels like, to me, it kind of feels like a uh, creep show. Like a creep show episode. It, it is it, a bit. It, it, well, and honestly, it, totally, it, it was kind of well, like in that. Creepshow, there was yeah. that second one that had Stephen King in it, The Lonesome yeah. Death of Jordy Verrill, where he turned yeah. into a plant person also. Yeah, I guess so. So there was a lot of that shit. There's a lot of people turning into plant and comic book, <laughs> plants and comic book movies in 1982. Well, Creepshow was, was a comic book movie, too. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, Creep, you know. That, that was EC. Yeah. And um, it kind of had that same tone, and it had a lot of the same effects. It was just more action-oriented. Kind of like an action movie from the 80s. And I mean, Creepshow is, dudes blowing up and dudes is much, much better movies. than Swamp Thing. Uh, yeah. I do like Swamp Thing, but Creepshow is like a, a lot better. Yeah. Swamp Thing has some of the comic book stuff to it, like the, like the wipes yeah. uh, or comic comic booky like, uh, like Creepshow had. But it's not as stylized. Yeah. I mean, one of the best things about Creepshow is that it looks like a comic with those bright ass colors and all those like crazy backgrounds and stuff like that. This one doesn't have that. It's a lot more naturalistic. If you like, if you like eighties action and you liked Creepshow, you'd probably like this movie. Yeah, it's a fun, yeah. fun movie. And like I said, if you you know if you always wanted to see Adrian Barbeau's tits. Yeah, you want to see that version that's on Tubi. You want, you want to see the yeah, version Barbara. the version that's on Tubi does have all the titties, yeah. all, does pretty, have all the nudity. Pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, pretty impressive. And like I said, I do like... Well, you know, not too much today. I mean, all these girls are fucking have got huge fucking cans and fucking a lot of implants. I mean, you know, it's just everywhere now. But back in those days, you know, just... Well, you had to porn. take what you could get. You, you so. could, had to take what you could get. You know? <laughs> porn was difficult to get, you know, especially you couldn't just get it delivered to you over a phone. Carrying your phone around in your pocket, that shit didn't exist back then either. So you Yeah, know. you had to find some find some playboys in the woods yeah, or something. Yeah, some <laughs> Or hope for a little glimpse, or yeah, or was, try to like see stuff like when yeah. you know you had all the all the Playboy Channel and stuff yeah. that was all like scrambled on yeah, your yeah. cable box, and you had to like just watch and it's like oh I think I see a nipple. Yeah, it was it was that. Yeah, <laughs> I remember those fucking channels. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, they were all scrambled. Mm-hmm. But every now and then you could kind of see something. Yeah, like straight out for a few seconds every now and then. Yeah, and then you're like oh all right, but it, 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 sometimes it's during a commercial though. <laughs> Oh my god. But yeah, so uh yeah, tell 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 us what you think about uh Swamp Thing, one of Wes Craven's lesser talked about movies, I guess, even though it's uh, actually a perfectly enjoyable 80s uh monster movie, kind of fun. Uh you know, could have done with some better special effects, but that's okay. I still had a good time watching it. Uh so yeah, that'll do it for this movie retrospective. We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. <laughs>